Well, let's get some more analysis. I'm joined here in the studio by Bruno, Bruno Cotres, who is a research fellow and a political science lecturer at Sciences Po. Welcome to the programme, Professor. Um, 740,000 people taking to the streets nationwide today. That's down quite significantly, about 25% lower than the official number stated last week. Do you think that means this protest movement is running out of steam? I think it would be wise not to make any definitive conclusions because we, we just need to wait till the next time. If the next time it is the same trend, which is going down, yes, that would be clearly a sign that the movement is a little bit on the decline. Uh, we could have uh, different explanations for today. Uh, one of the explanations it is that it is 10 times now that people demonstrate in the streets. People do some sacrifices. It costs you when you demonstrate uh, on your salary, exactly speaking. And also, also the feeling that uh, you demonstrate, you demonstrate, you demonstrate, and the government is still on a very strict position, which is, I will not abandon my project. Uh, game is over, basically speaking. And finally, we have some little sign that maybe the dialogue would reopen between the government and the trade unions. Uh, the executive today sent different signs that they are still open to negotiate, more exactly to talk with the trade unions, and the trade unions are calling for a pause that maybe Macron should put the reform aside and that we they, they should they would like to restart talking about salaries, uh, lifelong learning, um, and uh, working working uh, conditions. But um, uh, you have finally also a last feeling that people and all the polls are showing that the majority of the French oppose to the reform. But at the same time, they have a very realistic or pessimistic position that it will happen anyway. Yeah, well, they, they, they shouldn't be too surprised because, after all, uh, President Macron promised and pledged, he campaigned uh, to renew and review the pension system uh, in two campaigns. So it's surprising that people are surprised that he's... He's coming good on that promise. But just listening to some of the analysts on, on the airwaves here in France today, I mean, it seems like the anger isn't even particularly or necessarily about pension reform anymore. It's a sort of a broader, we don't like President Macron protest, isn't it? Yes, that's the point. In the beginnings, it was clearly uh, the question of uh, working life, uh, pension, uh, age, and this kind of thing. But since that Macron has used... Uh, the legislative tools, which is basically speaking to impose to the French parliament that the law pass. Actually, since that, you have a new, uh, quite a significant turn. People are no longer talking that much about pensions, but they are talking about uh, democracy. They are talking about uh, uh, freedom of speech, uh, an executive power, which is too much vertical, that decide just alone. And we are getting back to actually what happened during the Yellow Vest. It is not the same as the Yellow Vest. Uh, the major difference is, that, we, is that, that now the trade unions are on board. Clearly, it was absolutely not the case during the Yellow Vest. But basically speaking, we are getting back to the same feelings and the same sentiments of the French public. Uh, France is unjust, but also the democratic system doesn't work, doesn't function, doesn't deliver. And yes, it is really, and particularly when you, if you see the motivations for the young people, what could drive someone very young to demonstrate in the street about pension age at the age of 64? It is clearly the question of democracy in the country. Mm. And, and uh, you know, there are people out there saying that they'll be lucky if it's 64 and not uh, 67 or 70 by the time they eventually retire. Uh, just lastly, uh, we're almost out of time. Uh, the government, of course, not backing down once again, saying today it's not going to halt, it's not going to pause the reform. How does the government calm the situation? Can it compromise in any way? That's true. We have a feeling that the government went in a trap where there is no escape. You can't find any exit anywhere. So maybe that the government is just waiting what the constitutional court is going to say. And maybe that if the constitutional court would sanction even partly the text, maybe it would offer to the French government 
a final escape, which is maybe that, yes, we should calm down the situation, we are going to work again on the text, but on today you don't see any exit. It is like a deadlock. Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us, Bruno Cotres, uh, Research Fellow and Political Science Lecturer at Sciences Po. Thank you.